you've seen us testing these six hot hatches on the road, now it's time to test their ultimate performance on the track at challenging Winton Motor Raceway. It's a mouth-watering array of affordable turbocharged talent on offer here. The Ford Fiesta ST Triple Terror, the well-specced new Hyundai i20N, the latest Volkswagen Polo GTI, the 2.3-litre Ford Focus ST Big Banger, the eminently adjustable Hyundai i30N and the legendary Volkswagen Golf GTI. All six contenders have turbo petrol engines that power their front wheels, but from there, things do tend to diverge. Three use dual clutch transmissions, two have old school manual gearboxes, and one is a torque converter auto. We've also got two class contests happening within the main fight, as three of our hot hatches are minis, and three are small cars. Which will emerge as the fastest and most enjoyable to punt at speed? Well, it's going to take a talented driver to find out. And we couldn't think of anyone better to do the job than Bathurst champ Luke Yulden. Luke's warming up with 0 to 100 km straight line sprints, and the times are revealing. Clearly, the Hyundai i30N really has its act together when it comes to launch control. On to the lap times. We're starting with the minis and we're going with the Ford Fiesta ST first. Its triple cylinder engine is the smallest on test, but this mighty mini has blown us away many times over the years with its giant killing performance. Let's find out if it impresses Luke. Well, I'm in the Ford Fiesta and doesn't this little thing growl? I love that sound. Almost 170 k's into turn one here at Winton. Whoa, a little bit of an oversteer balance through turn one. Not bad, not bad at all. Listen to that sound. I'm using all the curbs here, handles the curbs pretty well. A little bit loose on the entry. Using those rumble strips. Ah oh, man, the sound is phenomenal. Tip it in flat into the sweeper. We'll need a bit of a break here though. This is where the front wheel drive. Oh, it's reasonably balanced. A little bit of push up over these curbs. Three wheels protesting. <laughs> that was probably a little bit too aggressive. Windscreen wipers come on then. All right, a little bit in between gears here. I've got to pull third gear. See if we can hold second gear through here. Wheels protesting. Hear that? All right, end of the lap. See how we go here in the little fest Fiesta. 41s. Luke, pretty decent time from the Fiesta there, but a bit of an issue with the steering during the lap. Just tell us what happened. Yeah, halfway through the lap, we ended up slightly right hand down. I've just ran a little bit wide on one of the judder curbs here and, and the steering's altered from then on. I don't think it affected the lap time too much, but uh, interesting to see what happened. So just to pull out a bit from that, the overall picture of the car, it's a small little car, pretty nimble. What did you think of it overall? I loved it. I love the growl of the engine. I love the slight turn and oversteer balance it has right when you just initially give the wheel a bit of a turn. It helps the car rotate and point. That quaff diff really puts its power down well too. So a really good start, really good benchmark. Next up is the Hyundai i20N. It's the newcomer in the group and one of a number of impressive performance models launched recently by Hyundai's emerging end division. <laughs> Right, I-20N, I've been really excited to drive this car. Tell you what, at gear ratios, it really pulls every time you pull the gear. Reasonably big speeds down here. Back to third gear for turn one. You actually got to push that brake pedal reasonably hard, much more like a race car. Try and stay off these curbs. Tell you what, it's reasonably balanced. Oh, far, it's really neutral. Again, try and stay off these curbs. Ooh, a little bit loose on the entry, just caught a bit of a wet patch. That was fun. Up into fourth gear into the sweeper here. And it's got really amazing grip. The curbs don't seem to worry it too much at all. Really good gearing here at Winton. I'm just off the limiter or just kissing it in between these corners. And it does, doesn't it respond? Look at that. It's always, you know, front wheel drive car, 
inherently you drive to the understeer, but it's a really high level. All right, I finished the lap. Not bad at all. Into the 39s. Luke, the Hyundai i20 and, and the Fiesta spec up really closely, but this thing's a couple of seconds up the road. What's going on? Yeah, the racetrack suggests otherwise, doesn't it? This thing feels like it's got the hand of God just helping you. It seems to be really well tuned in terms of those aids, so torque vectoring and the diff. I know the Fiesta has it as well, but this seems to be doing it at a slightly different level. It just makes you feel like a better driver. What about things like gearbox, gearing, pull off the corners, things like that. How is that helping you? So grip level is elevated for sure over the Fiesta, but I think the lap time gain mostly comes from the gearing. So we're not having the short shift or pull gears in between corners here. And I think the just the gear split seems to be work better here as well. So as you pull into third gear, it really starts to accelerate where the Fiesta sort of dragged up a little bit. The last of our minis is the Volkswagen Polo GTI. If heritage was the defining characteristic of a hot hatch, then the German would be our winner without having to fire a shot. But all that counts here is what happens when Luke gets it on the track. Well, I'm in the VW Polo GTI, and it feels much more executive than the other two little cars I've been in so far. I'm in manual mode, but it's still changing up for me. It doesn't trust me, and a little bit too much push in the first part of the lap doesn't quite have the same entry dynamics as the other two cars. I think it is changing up for me. The sweeper here, you can feel those tyres really protesting. Still feels reasonably sharpish though. Again, there's that gear, gear selection. You got that usual front wheel drive understeer through turn 10 there. It's far out. <clears throat> Again, doesn't feel quite as dynamic. Much more suited to the road, I reckon. All right, here we go, finish the lap. 43.69, quite pedestrian. The stopwatch at the racetrack is the ultimate arbiter of truth, mm -hmm. and the Polo is four seconds slower than the Hyundai. What is going on? Amazing, isn't it? But I tell you what, if the i20N is a hot hatch, this thing feels much more like a mild hatch. So awesome for driving around the streets, not so much on the racetrack. So where is it losing that time? Just a little bit everywhere. It just, it just understeers a lot more. In manual mode, it changes gears for me when I don't want it to. It just feels a bit softer. What can Volkswagen do? Well, look, they've got a Golf R, haven't they? So how about a Polo R? Wow, the i20N has emerged as our fastest Mini and Luke reckons it's the most fun to drive as well. And now it's the bigger hot hatches hitting the track. More power, more weight, bigger brakes, and they all trade in torsion beamer ends for independent setups. We're starting with the Ford Focus ST, which has the lowest price and the biggest engine amongst these three. Well, Ford Focus ST this time, and it is very loud in comparison to the other cars. Nice and raspberry, actually both Fords. Oh, look at that, nice turning oversteer. It's getting on with it. This is a bit of fun. Little bit of mid corner push, but a little bit of well, probably a lot of turning over steer. I got stability control off, but it's uh, it's on the loose side, which is actually quite fun. What a front wheel drive car needs to be to be fast. You can really feel the torque in this car, you can also feel the weight though, too. Well, I finished the lap off in the fear in the focus, it's uh, get my forwards confused. It feels fast to see what this lap time does. 38.4, it's quick. Well Luke, up with the big boys. What did you make of the bigger car? Well, we've really upped the ante now, haven't we? So much more power, more noise, um, more torque, more weight you can feel as well, but the, the lap time reflects all that. You know, it's just, it's just really stepped it up. So do you really feel like this is a hot hatch, a really good angry sort of track car? This is starting to feel to me like what a hot hatch should be like. A little bit edgy, noisy, not perfect, but it's fun and that's what a hot hatch should be. Now it's the turn of the Hyundai i30N. As much power as the Ford, lots of chassis and drivetrain adjustability and a trick limited slip front diff as well. 
But let's see what happens when Luke gets it on the track. Let's start the lap in the I30N. And it feels like a much angrier little car than the cars we've driven so far. Really big speeds down into turn one. Again, similar to the I20, much firmer brake pedal than a lot of the other cars. Really responds through turn two there. Let's get on with it. Slide entry oversteer here, which helps it turn. You can see that. that really puts its power down to the corner. Yeah, it does struggle a little bit with a little bit too much turn and too much gas. Yeah, that's a front wheel drive trade course. The tires are really protesting. Yeah, it feels fast though. This car feels like a hot hatch. Well geared for winter. <laughs> it's fun. Well, the I-30 feels fast. Let's see what it does on the stopwatch. Yeah, it's quick. It's very quick. Well, Luke, you've just thrashed the i30N out here at Winton. In fact, you can still hear the car cooling down, recovering from that. Two seconds faster than any car you've sent out there so far. What did you find? Yeah, can you see the smile on my face? <laughs> this this feels like what a hot hatch should be. It's it's a little bit angry. It's uh, you know it, it's it's stiff. It's dynamic. Exactly what a hot hatch should be for the track. So, Luke, one of the big things about this car is it has a huge amount of digital adjustability. You could press buttons in there, changing settings for everything from the diff to the traction control, whatever. Is that the essence of what makes the car fast? This fact that you can tune it so much digitally. Well, I'm sure we could if we played with it, but we've just done a handful of laps. Obviously, the inherent balance of an inherent car underneath is all you need. Well, Luke's really set himself a challenge here. The Volkswagen Golf GTI is our most expensive contender, but the key number here is it's giving away 26 kilowatts to its rivals. Another VW with a huge reputation, but will that help it deal with Winton's twists and turns? Volkswagen Golf GTI, been looking forward to this little car. Generally been the benchmark for a lot of years now. Again, it's reasonably rapid into turn one here. And yeah, much like the Polo, doesn't quite trust me to change gears by myself. So I'm in manual mode and it's still shifting. But it feels, uh, it feels fast. If anything, uh, a little bit too much understeer mid corner. Again. Feels a little bit less track car-ish, a little bit more road car-ish. Alright, wait for the tyre screw to end up. Yep. Slightly better geared. I can use third gear in between the corners for a reasonable amount of time. And then back to second gear to help it rotate. Looking for those exits. Again, feels like a pretty strong engine. Just doesn't feel as angry as what I remember them to be. Been a pretty safe lap it doesn't feel like it's trying to kill me at all and yeah i mean it's, it's pretty rapid lap time is, is pretty strong another hot hatch test another generation of golf gdi luke this is mark 8 how do you think it compares to previous generations look they, they always get better don't they I, I expected something a little bit more angry for the track though i guess so i can see they're shifting more to the road car less track car so two seconds off the i30N at the end, fair representation? I think so. To be honest, I thought it'd be probably slower than that, but it just sort of really snuck up on me. So it's a, it's a car that I think is super safe for the track. So if you're inexperienced a little bit, I think this is the car for you. So let's check out those lap times. No doubt it's a triumph for Hyundai's end division. Luke, great day to day at Winton six grade hot hatches, and the Hyundai i30N has emerged at the top of the timesheets. And I think it's done pretty well for you with fun factor as well. Huge amount of fun factor in this car, Bruce. Uh, really engaging, really dynamic, um, really strong engine as well. I had, you know, had a blast. So I guess 
we could go there with the timesheet and just rank them in order from there. But I think Fun Factor plays a role for you in how you saw the other cars as well. Yeah, look, somewhat out of order, I guess, is a little car, the i20N. It's uh, not too far away in lap time in terms of its bigger brother, but uh, bargain basement price too. Yeah, real bang for your buck there. Yeah. So there you have it. We've shown you recently how good these new generation hot hatches are on the road. Today, Luke's shown you how great they are on the track as well. There's no doubt about it. We're really spoiled for hot hatch choice in Australia at the moment. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos and let us know what you think in the comments below.